we just like to start with walking you through our journey to create this book, which I think uh, is very, very special. So my childhood was very extraordinary. Um, I had a father who was a tiger biologist and dragged me along everywhere. And I kind of spent uh, my time doing very strange things from nature, particularly urban children. And National Geographic has supported a lot of our work. So I went uh, to the National Geographic Symposium five years ago and ran into a fellow Bangalorean. Yes. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, I'm Raghava. And um, I'm really excited to be here. I met Kriti five years ago at uh, in Washington DC and she walks up to me casually and she says I heard there's a cool Bangalorean here I said cool for sure and Bangalorean even more sure and uh, we decided immediately that we should collaborate she's a scientist I'm an artist and I got inducted into the National Geographic Society for bringing art science and technology together and it only made sense that we work together uh, my my background is I grew up in Bangalore uh, I quit formal education to become a cartoonist and uh, went traveling all over the world and fell in love with painting. And one of the things that I've been doing constantly is trying to do art outside of the art world. And uh, I'm really passionate about animals. I'm even more passionate about children. And I happen to have four of them with Netra, who is sitting right here. Um, and all of us got together and said, let's, let's create, do something together. And that is the birth of this, uh, this children's book. And um, yeah, so tell us a little bit about um, the philosophy and what so the I background. So I think I came to this um, realizing that um, when you look at most children's books in, in India today, they have animals that are not found in India. And our kids know animals found in Africa, in South America. And I, so I told Raghava, we are, going to ra we, we are going to come up with a children's book that celebrates India's wildlife. It's going to be bilingual. We start with a Kannada and English version. And then we want to do it in English and Tamil, English and Hindi, English and Marathi, and really take it across India. The very the purpose of it was actually to, um, this book is actually not commercially for sale. It is going to be given um, for free to tens of thousands of children living on the edge of, uh, edges of our parks with the hope that uh, they don't view tigers and leopards and elephants with hostility, but really uh, start to fall in love with them the way we have. The origin of this book was uh, a research that Kriti had uh, done. Uh, concerning wildlife urban conflict and we identified the animals that are most endangered we came up with a list of 10 and initially we started creating characters out of them one thing we both were very clear about is we are not going to anthropomorph these characters we didn't want to make them human like we wanted at the same time the children of the gods to associate with them so uh, we tried multiple attempts and we would go back and try and work with children to see what they associate with. Uh, these are some of the children in the, in the villages. This is Kriti and uh, me working together on storyboarding and this is trying to create characters. One of, one of the, um, of course I had my kids as my filters. They'd say this is horrible or this is, they're brutally honest, children are brutally honest. Um, one of the things that we were very particular about is, as I said, we would beta test all. It took us four years to arrive at the right characters. And it's, it's multiple tests. Uh, initially, we started creating illustrations that were very realistic, but uh, trying to bring characters to life like this. And then we found that they didn't, the characters were not magical. They were too uh, realistic. And so we, w we put a team together. Um, these are, again, the realistic characters. We put a team of amazing people together, and uh, we decided to bring these characters to life and bring out the spirit. We wanted to find the right balance between like anthropomorphed characters and uh, realistic. We wanted it to be magical and spirited. So the first thing we had to come up with is a story. We had the characters and then a story. That brings us to Netra. Could you tell us a little bit about how you uh, thought of the story? Uh, so because the whole point 
of the book was to get kids to be really into it and to really fall in love the, with the animals. We wanted to come up with a story that would be really appealing to them, so something they could relate to, uh, something that was repetitive, uh, and something that they felt was a lot of fun. And so that's the really, like, I thought about the books that my kids liked, and that's how we started to come up with the story. Yeah. We did not want to go and say, this is the gore, this is what it does. We didn't want the book to be didactic. We wanted it to be silly, fun, and, um, and just engaging. We also decided to launch the book in Canada. And we wanted to create the books in every regional language that was available uh, along the Western Ghats. And we started with Canada, and we wanted it to be produced in an extremely professional, really well-made book. And, and so uh, we worked with Kokachi, a fantastic publishing house that helped us design a book. Now, anyone who knows uh, Kriti and me, we don't do things normally. We have to have some mischief in the book. Uh, we will re reveal the mischief uh, in a bit. But I think first I want to invite Nitya Rao to read uh, My Kannada is Terrible, Kshamis Beku. I will do the Karnataka Dalli Hutti Bali Davane Kannada Varalandre Enta Nachike. Adare nano English ali ottini. You do the Kannada version, I'll do so the English version. So strange. <laughs> We've all been taught in English, you know that, right? Right. <laughs> My Kannada is pretty bad. <laughs> so the name of the book is Nanna Jote Ardue. This is, will you play with me? Come play with me. Um. ಮರಿ ಸಿಂಗು ಮುಂಜಾನೆ ಬೆಳಗ್ಗೆ ಹರಿದಂತೆ ಮರಿ ಸಿಂಗು ಎಚ್ಚತ್ತ ದ ಸನ್ ವಾಸ್ ರೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಈಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಬೇಬಿ ಮಕಾಕ್ ವಾಸ್ ವೈಡ್ ಅವೇಕ್ ಎದ್ದೇಳಿ ಆಡೋಣ ಬನ್ನಿ ವೇಕ್ ಅಪ್ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇ ಅವರು ಸೋಮಾರಿಗಳು ಆ ಕಳಿಸಿ ಮತ್ತೆ ನಿದ್ದೆಗೆ ಜಾರಿದರು ದೇ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಯೋನ್ಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟು ಸ್ಲೀಪ್ ಮರಿ ಸಿಂಗು ಆನಕ್ಕನ ಹುಡುಕಿ ಆಟಕ್ಕೆ ಕರೆದ ದ ಬೇಬಿ ಮಕಾಕ್ ವೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಸರ್ಚ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಎಲಿಫೆಂಟ್ ಪುಟ್ಟ ಆನೆ ಅಕ್ಕ ಅಮ್ಮನ ಜೊತೆ ಹೊಳೆ ಸ್ನಾನದಲ್ಲಿದ್ದಳು ದ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಎಲಿಫೆಂಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಬೇದಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಹರ್ ಅಮ್ಮ ಆದರೆ ಹತ್ತು ನಿಮಿಷ ತಡೆ ನಾನು ಬರ್ತೀನಿ ಇಲ್ಲ ಇದು ಓದಿ ದೆನ್ ವಿಲ್ ರಿವೀಲ್ ದ ಯಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಸಿಂಗು ಈಗ ಸ್ನಾನದ ಸಮಯ ನೋ ಬಟ್ ಪ್ಲೇ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಮೈ ಬಾತ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಆದರೆ ಹತ್ತು ನಿಮಿಷ ತಡೆ ನಾನು ಬರ್ತೀನಿ ಅಲ್ಲಿಂದ ಸಿಂಗು ಗೆಳೆಯ ಕಾಟಿಯನ್ನು ಅರಸಿದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ದೇಬಿ ಮಕಾಕ್ ವೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಇಸ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ದ ಗೋರ್ ಕಾಟಿ ಮೆಲಕಾಡುತ್ತ ಮಲಗಿದ್ದ ಬಟ್ ದ ಗೋರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಬಿಸಿ ಮಂಚಿಂಗ್ ಯೆಸ್ಟರ್ಡೇಸ್ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ನಾಟಕ ಬರಲ್ಲ ಈ ಊಟ ಆರ್ಗಿಸಬೇಕು ಬಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಬಿಸಿ ಚೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಮೈ ಕಡ್ ಆಟ ಆಡಿದ್ರೆ ಊಟ ಆರ್ಗುತ್ತೆ ಕಾಣೋ ಕಾಂಟ್ ಯು ಕಾಂಟ್ ಯು ಚೂ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ವಿ ಪ್ಲೇ ಅದು ಹೌದು ಓಕೆ ಮರಿ ಸಿಂಗು ಅಲೆದಾಡುತ್ತ ಮರಗಳ ತಡಿಯ ತುದಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಜಿಗಿದಾಡುವ ಮುಚ್ಚಗಳ ಗುಂಪನ್ನು ಆಟಕ್ಕೆ ಕರೆದ ದ ಲಂಗೂರ್ಸ್ ವರ್ ಅಪ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಟ್ರೀ ಟಾಪ್ ಸ್ವಿಂಗಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಟ್ರೀ ಟು ಟ್ರೀ ಕೆಲಸ ಕೆಲಸ ಪುರ್ಸೊತ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಬಿಸಿ ಡೇ ಬೇಬಿ ಮುಚ್ಚಗಳು ತುಂಬ ಅವಸರದಲ್ಲಿ ಓಡಿ ಹೋದವು ದಿ ಸೀಮ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಇನ್ ಅ ಡ್ಯಾಶಿಂಗ್ ಹರಿ ಅಲ್ಲಿಂದ ಮುಂದೆ ಓಂಗಿಲೆ ಹಕ್ಕಿ ಕುಟುಂಬ ಬೆಳಗಿನ ತಿಂಡಿ ಮುಕ್ಕುವುದನ್ನು ಕಂಡ ದ ಹೋರ್ನ್ ಬಿಲ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ವಾಸ್ ರ್ಯಾಲಿಶಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ಯಾಚ್ ಈ ಗೋಣಿ ಹಣ್ಣು ಎಷ್ಟು ರುಚಿ ನೀನು ತಗೋ ದೀಸ್ ಫಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಯಮ್ ಡಿ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಸಮ್ ನೀನು ನನ್ನ ಜೊತೆ ಆಡಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ಹಣ್ಣು ತಿನ್ನಲ್ಲ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಪ್ಲೇ ವಿತ್ ಮೀ ಮರಕಪ್ಪೆಗಳು ಹಾರಾಡುತ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದವು ದ ಫ್ರಾಗ್ಸ್ ವರ್ ಸ್ವೂಪಿಂಗ್ ಡೌನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ
ಇವತ್ತು ಬರೀ ಹಾರಾಡುವ ಪಾಠ ವಿ ಹ್ ಗ್ಲೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಸ್ ಟುಡೇ ನಾಳೆ ಆಡೋಣ ವಾರ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇ ಟುಮಾರೋ ಕೆನ್ನಾಯಿ ಮರಿಗಳು ಎಲೆ ಬಿಸಿಲಿಗೆ ಮೈ ಹುಡುಗುತ್ತಿದ್ದವು ದ ಡೋಲ್ ಪಪ್ಸ್ ವರ್ ಹರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವಾರ್ಮ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಸನ್ ಬೆಳಗಾಯಿತು ಆಡೋಣ ಬನ್ನಿ ದ ಸನ್ ಇಸ್ ಔಟ್ ಕಮ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ಲೇ ಆ ಕೆನ್ನಾಯಿಗಳು ಇನ್ನಿಷ್ಟು ಬೆಚ್ಚುಗೆ ಹುದುಗಿ ಗೋರಕ್ಕೆ ಹೊಡೆದವು ಪತೇಜ ಸ್ನಗಲ್ ಕ್ಲೋಸರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕ್ಯಾಪ್ ಸ್ನೋರಿಂಗ್ ತುಸಿ ದೂರದಲ್ಲಿ ಹುಲಿ ಮರಿಗಳು ಆಟ ಆಡುತ್ತಿದ್ದರು ದ ಟೈಗರ್ ಕಬ್ಸ್ ವರ್ ಪ್ಲೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಶೇಡಿ ಟ್ರೀಸ್ ನಿನ್ನಂತ ಮಂಗನ್ ಜೊತೆ ನಾವು ಆಡೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಹುಲಿ ವಿ ಪ್ಲೇ ವಿತ್ ಯು ಹುಲಿ ಟೀಮ್ಗೆ ನೀನು ಸಲ್ಲ ಯು ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆರ್ ಟೀಮ್ ನನ್ನ ಜೊತೆ ಆಡ್ತೀಯಾ will you play with me so as you can see it's an extremely dark story of a little baby macaque asking all the animals in the jungle will you play with me will you play with me and they all give excuses and nobody has time to play with the baby macaque so in the end the baby macaque turns to the reader and says will you play with me and here's the secret the only way the the reader can play with the baby macaque is if the reader realizes these are masks and if the reader starts plucking out the masks the story changes all the animals start playing with the baby macaque and the idea was that the masks then uh, the 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 reader holds the masks in their hands and the only way you can play is to bring those animals to life uh, could i request kaya and i like to come here and show us how you bring those masks to life Kaya and Ayla are and ja- Come here. These are our babies and we ask them to wear the mask. The only way that the reader can bring the animals to life is to enact and role play. So this book was not about um didacting. Come here, Kaya. Ayla, come here. Look. Give a big round of applause for Ayla <laughs> and Kaya. So the book has masks and every animal starts playing once the masks are in your hand. So the idea was we wanted the child to actually own take ownership and play and I thought play we both felt that play is the most powerful way to empathize with uh, an animal. So this is an interactive book and at the end children in the villages will be taught how to make up their own play using the masks in the book. So this is not just a book it is uh, a, a sort of a interactive uh, drama class uh, in it so um thank you guys and that's anaga my little one and jaya thank you guys <laughs> i thought you're going to act like a tiger <laughs> okay so um what is important for us is with this book Kriti and I are kickstarting an entire movement to bring artists and scientists together to imagine new ways to engage in a non-didactic way with uh the problems that we face as scientists in uh, in India. Um we really touched that National Geographic Society has um given us the um sorry you can see the masks changing the story here. National Geographic Society gave us the grant to distribute this to 10,000 children in Canada and we hope to launch this in multiple other languages. And um, we really touched that Kokachi and Prabha who is another brilliant illustrator uh, assisted me with uh, the illustrations and um, we're really proud to launch the Canada Children's Book at the Bangalore Literary Festival and thank you for uh, joining us. Congratulations. um we were told we have another 10 minutes so we'd love to take questions um any questions and thank you nitya for the kannada that was brilliant yes yes these books are not for sale however uh, uh do you want to tell us about the order? 
So where do we get that? Get them from? Center for Wildlife Studies is actually distributing this and is raising funds to distribute. Yeah. So anyone who would be interested in getting a copy and wouldn't mind contributing to the to the foundation, I think we have someone from uh, we have Avinash over here and. There's uh, Avinash, so please meet Avinash if you're interested. This is not a commercial venture. The objective was to get high quality books that are well researched by scientists and we went, uh, we spent a lot of time uh, thinking about the aesthetics and we wanted to give it to uh, children because they're not an ideal market for children's books. Children's books don't make enough money. No publisher was willing to do this uh, because they thought absolutely no returns in this market. So we managed to uh, do this as a non-profit uh, effort. So are you planning this as a series or? Yes, we're planning this as a series, but we'll work with different artists, different scientists. Uh, the two of us are starting a foundation to do that. Uh, today we kickstart that. This is a good uh, Thank you so much. Uh, you know the Eric Carlyle movie? Uh, yes, we were inspired by Eric Carlyle. Yeah, yeah. I hope you go there because it yeah. is a real dearth for underprivileged children. And there's a dearth for... Uh, one more thing, we did a research, you know, we actually showed kids plain uh, cartoons like in the books and these crazy art forms. You'd be surprised. Kids are capable of complex visual, uh, of processing complex visuals. And we were surprised. I mean, um, they all loved this crazy version of a tiger as opposed to a realistic one. And for them, a tiger is not just a tiger. It's a spirit. It has, it comes to life. You want to add to that? So I think fundamentally to me, uh, we're at extraordinary crossroads if you look at wildlife and wildlife conservation. And um, basically, uh, we've lost a lot of animals, but we've also succeeded in bringing some of these back in some parts of India. And our ability to hold on um, to extraordinary animals amidst 1.5 billion people really rests on our inherent tolerance that we've always had as a culture. There's no other country in this world with this many people and this, mu this much wildlife. Uh, but it's essential that the next generation connects to nature. Most kids are urban. They don't see animals at, uh, at close range. And I think for children facing conflict or children disconnected from nature, this is one good way to try and hook them. So I hope uh, we get many, many more artists and scientists together because this really needs to be done. So um, we'd love your support. We'd love your suggestions. We'd love to collaborate with you. So please reach out to either Raghava or myself or yeah. and Netra as well. Thank you. I want to add two things. Both of us were uh, at the Inc. conference, actually, when we actually decided to make this happen. And somewhere in the audience, I don't know if Lakshmi is here, but um, it was really special that, you know, uh, Inc. is a platform where multiple people from different platforms come together from different fields. And it, we wanted to show that cross-pollination is possible. So please reach out to us if you feel that you want to collaborate with a scientist or an artist. And also, um, a personal uh, shout out to my dad. I see him there, Kalyan Raman. He's someone who has told me stories and bought, brought all animals to life. And I think that we're all storytellers. And the only thing that can change our condition of greed, overconsumption, is our ability to tell stories and fall in love with these animals. Uh, they're more than just animals. They're actually uh, spirits. <laughs>